Hey everybody, John here. Today we're going to be diving into Serum and today we're going to be making a pad. Now this one I called Haunted Universe because I have no idea what else to call it because after a while it becomes a little bit difficult to name different patches because they don't really sound like anything. You can kind of just name the type like a pad, a lead, a, a base and whatnot. But after that it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. So this one's called Haunted Universe. It's a pad and this is what this will sound like. So hopefully you dig that pad. I thought it was kind of cool, so I decided to make a video and share this one with you guys. So if you don't have it already open, make a new instance of Serum. I have this one here. I turned down the volume a little bit just because that saw wave is kind of loud at first. So if you don't have a default preset, make sure to click Menu and then Init Preset here at the uh, was it the third or fourth one. And so you'll start at the same spot as here. So. This one, I didn't really go in depth with creating the waveform. I kind of picked two of these monster ones. So let's click here on default, go down to spectral, and let's make monster one for the first oscillator. And then oscillator B, let's se select the uh, second one. Yeah. So let's turn this one off first, but we have it loaded. So let's kind of go into this guy and play around with it. So this one I automated or modulated, depending on what you call it this first LFO into the weight position. So let's drag this first LFO and grab it, turn all the way to the right so it's kind of an increasing LFO. And let's drag this over here to the weight position and then select this here and then drag this down. And I kind of had it, what was it, 27? Oh wow, I was actually on it, how about that? Uh, no, I'm not, there we go. Okay, so and then let's drag this knob here down a little bit, maybe below this little middle dot right there. And this first LFO is going to be a half note, so right here. So, so far. And we notice this LFO is repeating. So let's make sure to turn on envelope mode. So it just will play it through one time. So, that's basically the first iteration we're going to do. Now let's turn this oscillator 1 off, or oscillator A off, and let's go to B. And let's do essentially the same thing, but this one is going to extend a little bit further of that middle dot, and this is going to start at 48. So go here to the white position, drag and drop that first LFO. Let's bring this down a little bit. Let's turn this to 48. And let's see, it's maybe a little past that middle dot there. Let's bring it something like that. So it's just a little bit of movement. And let's turn both of our oscillators back on. And let's turn the filter on and send both oscillators through that filter. And this one I use the MG Low 24. So just select this filter here, normal, and then select MG Low 24. Now, I also used the second LFO for this cutoff here because I wanted the cutoff to be a little bit longer for two bars instead of this first LFO, which is a little bit quicker. So let's go to s select our second LFO, make the same shape and then drag this over to the cutoff, and then make this here uh, two bars. Now this one is kind of going to be to taste, so let's start it off a little bit past halfway, and then drag this down here. And if you ever notice how, like, if you're moving this, this button right here and it goes evenly, you can change that by uh, holding Shift and Alt at the same time, and then you can change the uh, how this thing moves here. So. In case yours is stuck like that for some reason, that's how you change that. So this one, this cutoff's a little bit past halfway-ish, and then it kind of goes, looks like all the way up there. So, so far, this is what we have. Also make sure that this one is also on envelope too. So we're getting a little bit more motion right here as well. And a lot of 
things that have to do with pads is the contour of the envelope. So this here, this first envelope, we have 802 milliseconds for our attack. So let's drag this up here, 802. Well, land right on it. And I, I'm not a big fan of this linear type of increasing here. I either like to go pull it down or pull it up. So this one, I kind of pulled it up a little bit. So it's a little outwards right there. And if you click this uh, magnifying glass, it kind of helps you see it a little bit better. Hold is going to be zero. Our decay is one second. I didn't touch that. And then the sustain is going to be like minus two or something, 2.8. And then the release, kind of play this to taste. The patch I have it set up is a little bit longer, like two, little up, little over two seconds or so. And then also bring this contour up just a little bit. So, so far we got the main type of tonality here. Let's uh, add some unison here to kind of fatten the sound up a little bit. So I did seven on both oscillators. And I dragged the detune down just a little bit so they're a little close together so they're not as detuned. And then on our second oscillator, let's bring this up one octave to get a little bit more of that top end. And then let's activate our sub oscillator and drop this down by one octave and bring the level down a little bit. So now this one's carrying a little bit more of the highs. This is kind of maybe mids, low mids, and then this is gonna carry the sub. So it's kind of covering the whole spectrum. So we're getting pretty close here with this pad and that's so far with no effects. So if you're ever designing a patch, I kind of recommend, I mean, this is what I try to do personally as much as I can, is make a good sound first, make the envelope how I want it to sound, get my oscillator sounding right in any type of modulation or automation. And then once that sounds decently good, it doesn't, it doesn't have to sound great, but once it sounds decently good, then go into jump, then go into, then jump into effects and then start kind of contouring from there and adding stuff and it'll kind of increase it because you don't want to first rely on all these effects while your main source of sound isn't as great as, as you want it to be. So there's a little tip of advice there. So let's jump into the effects and this is what we have so far. So I started here with a chorus and let's see, I think I dragged the rate down a little bit, 0.14 and I dragged it up just a little bit like that and then increased the mix knob just a little bit. I didn't touch too much of it, but just a little bit of taste to that. And then we put a little bit of delay on here and I kind of dragged this down and to the right so it kind of doesn't get as much of that low end there and not much of that high end. So it's just kind of getting a little bit of that center-ish. Was it 1.8 or 1.9 or something like that? 0.8Q. And normal is fine. Uh, quarter notes are fine as well. You can increase that or not. It depends. With pads, I kind of like to keep it a little bit slower. And then we did a compressor just to kind of tickle it a little bit so it's not, so it doesn't poke out too much. So just a little bit of touch of compression, nothing too crazy. And then we add some reverb on here and I have the hull still selected. I increased the size to about 50%-ish or so and I uh, took some of the lows out. So cut a little of those low frequencies out so, so you don't want to get your low end all reverb-y. It's an easy way to make everything sound muddy. And I dragged the spin and the spin depth down a little bit. And then next, basically, this here is going to be a little bit of an EQ to kind of cut some of the stuff out that I don't want. So I have here, uh, this bottom one here, selected this high pass. I drag the Q down as to not have that little bump, that resonance peak. And then this kind of just play to taste however much low end you want to cut out. But keep in mind, we did add this sub oscillator here. So that is carrying a significant power to the low end. So when we dump in this EQ, make sure not to cut it all the way off. Let's drag this down. And 
Maybe 888 is okay. Maybe a little bit less. Something like that. And then for the top end here, um, I mean, you can do tap a little bit of a shelf if you want to kind of bring out that, uh, that high end. That's more so to taste. I didn't add that here, but feel free if you'd like to. Something that I kind of recommend too is a lot of the times when you're making these type of these patches with a lot of low end, there's that really muddy kind of 300 to 400 hertz somewhere in there. So if we dial that here to three, let's go three, kind of middle ground, 360, kind of pop to 380, whatever. But so let's bring this gain up so I can sh so I can show you what I'm talking about. Widen the Q. Kind of right there for this patch, actually, that like late 200. It sounds like there's a little bit of a blanket over it. So once we find that, let's drag this down a little bit. Not to not take too much out, but just a little touch. And now that we have most of it built, then we can adjust our level here. And that essentially covers this patch. Feel free to change it or add stuff that you like or take stuff away if you don't like it. But this is just kind of how I created this patch. I thought it was kind of cool. Oh, ooh, before I end this, I did add a noise oscillator. Let's go back and add that. So I put air can one. I think that was in, uh, where was it? Was it organics? Yeah, air can one. And then this level is kind of just a little bit low. It's not adding too much, just a tiny little bit. Just that little, let's turn this off here so you can hear it. Just adding a little bit of that noise. What, it's, what is that, 13%? It's at nine, yeah. It, it's something that's just a little taste to it. It's nothing like, a, it's not like a feature by any means, but it's just a little difference adding something to it. So that's the gist of this patch. Feel free to use it. If you guys use the patch, I'd love to hear what you guys use it in. And if there's any other types of pads or plucks or whatever type of sound design you're struggling with, let me know and I'll try to make a video to help you out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.